There has been a terrifying discovery made by Parker and his team on Gold Rush Season 15. They were left totally speechless. Let's see what happens. 28-year-old Parker Schnabel drives a truck into his latest property. He has spent every last dime he had to buy Dominion Creek, so now he is bankrupt. He is losing money by the day, so he has ambitious goals for his team so he can make up for the lost money. Parker's team has dug over four acres in the money pit over the last three weeks since the season began. This time, Parker is determined to ensure that the team works harder, as he has such an ambitious goal. He intends to dig another four acres of land, but this time, he will do it in just three days. He says this to his team, and they all try to understand his motivations, since the cash flow needs to be sustained for the entire season to last. Parker hopes to get at least 6,000 ounces of gold by the end of the season, and this will give him $160 million that will help him come back next year and sustain all the excavation this season. Parker tells his team what needs to happen, and they all get to work. Veteran miner Damian Brown quickly prepares the rest of the crew for the place they need to start mining and how to be as effective as possible. The team needs to mine quickly before the snow melts, as this will add to the time they will need to move from one area to another. After extraction, Jacob takes the overburden to one side while Caden loads the waste to the trucks using a 750 excavator. The team is working tirelessly to meet the deadline. On the way back, Jacob feels that the truck is stuck somewhere. Luckily, the truck moves through, but he hears a weird sound that makes him suspect that something is wrong. In such cases, it is important for the trucker to investigate the noise to avoid further problems. Jacob steps out of the truck and realizes that the skid plate is hanging off the truck. He quickly calls Mitch and reports the incident. The team needs to get this fixed as soon as possible, so Mitch calls the mechanic, Bill. The two work tirelessly and improvise a quick fix to the skid plates using the excavator to straighten them. Once that is done, the team goes back to work. Meanwhile, Rick Ness in the Duncan Creek region is dealing with some personal trouble. In 2018, Ness's mother passed away. This loss made him so depressed that he had to take some time off gold mining and focus on getting better. He had gone home to take care of himself as he felt misunderstood and unheard. Ness had also had a terrible accident that left him with a fractured jaw and many mission teeth in the 10th season. Dealing with all these challenges has helped shape him into the resilient man his fans know him to be. In this season, Ness is back at Duncan Creek and has been staying with his loyal friend, Zaremba. Sadly, Zaremba has to drive back today after being at the camp for a few months. He feels that Ness is ready to continue working even though he has trust issues and no money to bring in more staff. Ness is ready to get back to work, but he wishes Zaremba would have stayed for longer. Nonetheless, he understands that Ness has to get back to his family. To get the season started, Ness had to sell his late mother's house. He also had to sign over his camp to a landowner as collateral. So far, he has gotten 21 ounces of gold on the property, amounting to $42,000. Ness is operating on a hand-to-mouth basis and needs something valuable if he is going to continue the season. For this, he has come up with a plan that he hopes will help him get the money he needs. Ness wants to run two piles to make a quick score and also intends to focus on the valley as it is a hotbed of gold. Due to his misfortunes, Ness only has one crew member working with him now that Zaremba is gone. The crew member, Morgan, is a gold mining greenhorn. She is operating an old rented loader that she feels is slowing the progress greatly. Morgan tries hard to meet the expected deadline, but she is having a hard time with the old loader and she feels that something needs to be done. Suddenly, Morgan feels something change in the truck. She steps outside and realizes that the truck has a flat. She tells Ness about this, and a disappointing air descends on the camp. Having a flat means that the work will be delayed for a time, and Ness is at risk of failing to sustain his production for the season. Desperate, Ness decides to ask Parker for a favor. As he leaves his camp, Ness recounts the deep history he has with Parker. Ness had been hired as a miner for Parker after he bought his property at 17 years old. The two quickly became good friends, and Ness really helped Parker in terms of the gold mining process. Ness was on track to being a foreman when he started having arguments with Parker. Eventually, he decided to leave the camp, saying he wanted to be his own boss. The two haven't spoken in two years. Ness suspects that Parker knows about his disappearance, and he is looking forward to catching up. 
Ness arrives at the camp and finds Parker. The two men talk for a while, with Parker saying that after he heard about Ness's troubles, he was positive that he would recover, as he is a survivor. Ness says that he has had some time to figure things out, and one of the things he realized is that he had given Parker some of his best years. Parker appreciates this, as he has learned so much from Ness. Ness reveals his reason for the visit, asking Parker to help him with a loader that he isn't using. It turns out that after Parker bought the camp, it came with $2 million worth of equipment, most of which is still not in use. Parker shows Ness a loader that is not in use, and the two test it to see whether it is working well. The two confirm that the loader is fine, and Ness wants to come up with a payment plan for it. Parker has a hard time talking money with Ness. He told him to use the loader for as long as he needed, and they would talk about a cash payment in the fall. Ness is appreciative of the gesture, as the loader is exactly what he needs to meet his target. Ness says he will come to get the loader soon. The two men parted ways, promising to keep in touch. Parker admits that what Ness said has bugged him as Ness departs the camp. He does not think that Ness gave him the best years of his life, since Ness is only 42 years old, not 90. Ness is happy to catch up with Parker and get the loader he needs, but there is a huge problem. The loader is five miles away from his camp and weighs 35 tons, so it is necessary to haul it. However, due to the melting soil, the ground is soft and unstable, so something as heavy as the loader can easily damage the roads. The government has imposed a ban on such hauls, so Ness must wait at least a month for the ground to be stable. Elsewhere, the beach crew at Paradise Creek has been having a hard time. Three weeks into the season, the team hasn't started working on the ground. The team needs to get at least 6,000 ounces of gold to sustain the mining that season and make a profit. Tony has, therefore, decided to move the mining back to the Indian River claims. This place is full of unmined gold and is the fastest way to get the team to catch up with the other miners and hit their target. The first order of business is to move all the heavy equipment from Paradise Creek to Indian River. This is a challenging task as their destination is 40 miles away. Moreover, the path they need to take is long and treacherous. It involves a drive through a narrow road, a climb up a steep slope, and then cruising down a narrow and winding path to get to the camp. Tony is glad that Mike, his youngest son, is around to help with the move. Four years ago, the team was forced to quit mining at Indian River after they lost their mining permit. Now, getting permission is a much-needed lifeline, so they are determined to do their best and get started as soon as possible. The team loads everything they need into the trucks and starts the journey. Tony is excited about this new adventure, and he enjoys eating the lunch he has carried in his trusted lunchbox for over 30 years. The group reaches the spot where Mike had an accident a year earlier. He slows down his truck and tells Tony that he has dropped gear, so now he has lost the momentum he needs to finish the climbing stretch. Tony tries giving Mike some advice, but he feels micromanaged, causing the two to have an argument. Eventually, another truck has to drag Mike's truck up the slope since Mike complains that he is slipping. After a while, the team makes it to the Indian River claims. Four years after leaving Indian River, the team is back and ready to start working as soon as possible. But there is a discovery the Gold Rush team has made that nobody is talking about yet, and it's the biggest one so far. It has sparked immense interest among gold and mystery treasure enthusiasts alike. The Parker Schnabel has just revealed our brand new Gold Rush Special Edition phone cases, which are on sale for the new year, right at this moment. Discover them yourself by clicking on your screen right now, or check the first link in the description.